In this video, I would like to talk about how we can use properties inside of our view components. So essentially, this is component communication, how we can communicate from component A to, of course, component B. Let's start off with a blank Vue.js application. And our first exercise is to simply just get something on screen. So we'll say hello name. And of course, at this moment in time, it's simply just going to say hello because we haven't defined a name variable. So inside of our object or our view instance, we will simply return a new object with the value of name equal to poll. Now, of course, we get hello poll. Now, this is all well and good, but what if we wanted to have a particular component in place of this h1? Well, this would be known as our greeter component. So let's make a greeter.view. And of course, we'll scaffold out a new template. And that template will simply have a h1. And that instead will say hello name. We can register this component throughout the application by heading over to main.js. So we'll import greeter from greeter.view. We can then say view.component. And we'll call this app greeter and we'll pass through the greeter component. Then inside of our div, we can, of course, add the app greeter. And once again, we get hello, but now we need to add the data object back onto the other component. And now effectively, we have exactly what we had before. But this time I want to have an input box and that input box will allow us to type something inside of that. And then our greeter component, I want to pass that into that component and it should say hello whenever we've typed in the box. So let's make ourselves an input with the type of text. And we'll add something called V model. Now, if you've used Angular before, you'll see that vModel is quite similar to ngModel, simply just allows us to have two-way data binding based on a property, and this property will, of course, be called name. Let's initialize a data object again, this time with name just being blank. And at this point, we can head back over to our greeter component, but instead of using data, we're instead going to use something called props. Now, props allows us to define a prop, a property on the component, such as name at this point. So let's put name as a string. And then on the component instance, we can say v-bind colon name equal to name. So what this is going to do, it's going to bind that name property equal to the name variable inside of our app.view. So anything we type in this box, such is hello world. That's good, we've communicated from this component to another component, and we can even make this shorter if we get rid of the vbind and simply just keep this as a colon. But what if I want to communicate from the app greeter component back to, of course, the app component? How do we do that? Well, let's head back over to greeter.view and we'll assign a methods object. Let's make a method which is called alert name. And this will use this dot dollar emit. And what dollar emit does is it allows us to pass an event. We pass an event by a string name. And then of course we listen to that event on our parents component. So let's call this event the alert name. The alert name at this point has no relation to our function. So we could call this anything. And at this point, we also want to pass through this dot name. This then passes the value of the name that has been passed into this component so that when we create a button with the click event of alert name, all we then need to do is of course head back to our app.view and on the app greeter instance, if we type at alert name, that's effectively listening to this event. So we can make another method and this method can be called whatever we want, but I'm simply going to call it the same thing. And at this point we'll use alert. So this is the window alert and we'll alert that name and that comes through as a parameter because we assign the function call to be alert name and pass through the event. 
So I appreciate that there is quite a few alert names happening at this point. But just realize that we could simply call this whatever we wanted to. It has no relation to the other alert name. Now, if I type in the box again and hit alert, notice how we get this alert at the top of the screen. And that's because what exactly has happened is we've clicked the button inside of the greater component, which then of course emits this alert name event. It passes through this dot name as a sort of parameter argument to the emitted event. We're then listening for that event on the component itself by using at alert name. And this would be substituted for any sort of alert that you're listening to, so the name of the alert. On the right hand side here, we're firing a function that happens to have the same name as the alert, but is not necessary. And of course, in order to access the name, we need to use the dollar event. The event can be anything you want. It just so happens that it's all bundled inside of this variable. But what if we have decided that the type of property has to be a number? Well, we need to change the way that we have our props. Instead, we need to make it into an object. Then instead of name being a string, it also becomes an object with a type of number. We place this inside of an array because it could be multiple types if we wanted to. It could also be its own type if we've created our own class. So instantly, you'll notice that if we check our console, we now get an error because the name is a string, but it was expecting a number. So we could change that to instead be zero. And this would of course stop our error because it's no longer a string. But the second we then type inside of the box, we get that error back because anytime we're typing inside of an input box, it is of course a string. Another thing we can do is add required equal to true or false. That essentially states that this property is required whenever we create the component. I'm gonna put the type back to being a string for now. We could also pass through a default if we wanted a default value for the property itself. But more importantly, we can have something called a validator. The validator gives us the particular value and we can determine whether this is valid if, for example, the value.length is greater than 10. So let's have a look. Notice how it expected string but got number. That's fine, we can simply get rid of that. And anytime we type, we get this error. And that's because the custom validator has said, hey, this is literally one character. I'm expecting at least 10 for this to be valid. So if we type 10 characters, notice how we only have 10 error messages inside of the console. And that's because after the 10 items, after the 10 characters inside of the string, it is of course a valid property. So as far as the basics of component communication inside of Vue, that seems to be everything I wanted to cover inside of this video. Let me know what you think inside of the comment section. Don't forget to hit subscribe to of course stay updated and check out my Patreon over at patreon.com slash paulhalliday if of course you would like to support the content. Oh, this you crazy mother...